everyone. Welcome to our second presentation in the module DPP 1501. The name of the module is Diversity, Pedagogy and Practice. I am Dr. Malathela, the primary lecturer for this module. Today, I want us to look at assignments and how to respond to assignment questions. Uh, we shall also look at the learning unit number three of your module or of your study guide. Looking at assignments now, uh, please note that assignments are to be submitted online and submission to the lecturer's emails will not be accepted. Please al always adhere to the due dates because late submissions will not be accepted. Now, looking at how to answer assignment questions. In most cases, you come across keywords that are used or the verbs that are used when we ask you questions in the assignments. So I'm going to take you through uh, different keywords so that you, you learn how to respond to assignment questions um, related to specific keywords. The first one uh, is an analyze. If you come across the question that says analyze, please take apart an idea, a concept or a statement and examine and criticize its subparts in detail. In this case, you will have to be systematic or logical. Another one is assess. If the question says assess, you must describe the positive and negative aspects of a topic and state how useful or successful it is or consider its contribution to knowledge, events or processes. This is usually about how important something is. Another key word is compare. The question that needs you to compare means that you must put items side by side to see their differences and similarities. And another one can say contrast. In this case, emphasize the differences between two things. If the question says define, then you must give the meaning of an idea taken from a dictionary or an academic authority or your subject of study. It means you must provide a technical definition of a particular concept. And please always remember to acknowledge the reference sources. Another question may require you to describe. In this case, give details of processes, properties or events. Just give details. And another one can say differentiate. If the question says differentiate, show the differences between concepts or variables. If necessary, you can draw a table to illustrate the differences. Right. If the question says discuss, it needs you to describe, explain, give examples of and identify points for, for and against something and then analyze and evaluate the results. In this case, please do not apply bullets when you discuss. Just present your answer in paragraph forms and then please always remember to acknowledge re uh, reference sources. Another question can say evaluate. This is like discuss, but with more emphasis on judgment in the conclusion. If the question says examine, it means you must take apart and describe a concept in detail. If the question says explain, please give detailed reasons for an idea, a principle or a result, a situation or an attitude. You may need to do some analysis too. So if the question says illustrate, give concrete examples, including figures or diagrams. The question may also say interpret. In this case, explain and comment on a given subject 
and make a judgment or evaluation. It is also important to check allocation of marks for each question. This will determine the length of your response to a particular question. Acknowledge reference sources. Do not zoom your assignment when submitting online because this makes it difficult for the markers to mark your assignment. Assignments should be typed and submitted in PDF format. You are, you are encouraged to always submit typed assignments. Now, looking at learning unit number three, this learning unit is about identification and support for learners with barriers to learning. Now, you can ask yourself, how do you identify learners with barriers to learning? It means you must be able to screen, identify, assess, and support those learners. The first uh, most important step to take is to screen these learners. Different types of assessment are discussed in your study guide under learning unit number three, which is um, you can read from page 22 to page 29, which is baseline, formative, diagnostic, summative, and evaluative assessment. Please familiarize yourself with this section to understand how these assessments differ. I just said that for you to be able to identify learners with barriers to learning, you need to screen them. So the processes of screening um, are, are thoroughly explained in the South African policy on screening, identification, assessment and support. That is the CS document that, that has been published by the Department of Basic Education in 2014, you can access this document from your e reserves The rationale for the CS document is as follows. It has a purpose of teaching you about identification, assessment, and support for learners who may or are experiencing barriers to learning. It guides the management and support for teaching and learning for learners who experience learning barriers. It directs the education system on how to plan budget and program support at all levels of the system. The CS policy guides the enrollment of learners in special schools. It also guides the composition of and functioning of key support structures, such as the institutional level support team. It provides protocol and tools to be used by various role players to implement its processes. When you uh, peruse this document, that is the CS policy, um, you will identify or you'll find uh, the, the three stages that are followed or the three steps that are followed for identification and support for learners who are experiencing barriers to learning. The first stage or the initial stage um, is called screening. In this case, you make use of the learner profile and other documents. Please uh, read this policy document. You will find detailed information in it. So stage number two is about assessment and intervention by the teacher and school-based support team. And the school-based support team together with the teacher or the learning support teacher are going to use the support need assessment form uh, number one and number two. Then another stage is called, uh, it, it involves the, the district-based support team that uses the support need assessment form number three, which guides their discussions regarding the information provided by the school-based support team. 
the CS process stage one, which is called the initial screening and identification, um, begins or it must be done at the beginning of each phase, which means this is an ongoing process. Sources of information for screening include the learner profile. Uh, the learner profile normally contains the learner number or the student number, the phase uh, on, uh, in which the, 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 the learner is enrolled for, personal information, reports from parents, uh, parents interviews, health professionals, psychologists, if applicable and other relevant sources of information about the learner, such as the year end report. So all these documents uh, should be found in the learner profile. The, the road to health booklet can also help in screening and identification of barriers to learning, especially for grade R learners at foundation phase level. The integrated school health program reports can also be useful because you will be able to know about the, 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 the physical challenges of the learner or the neurological aspects and so forth. So school health or the integrated school health program in this case will be very much useful for you to be able to screen and identify the learner to find out if they have any barriers to learning. The reports of the teachers uh, which are currently used to screen the learner or the, 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 the tasks that are given in this classroom can also be involved to screen the learner because uh, teachers are able to see if the learner is performing well or not, and they would like to know the reasons behind poor performance and so forth. So the teacher's reports are also important in screening and identification of the learners. Now, looking at classroom support, once the learners have been identified as having barriers to learning, they will need classroom support. This can be carried out through, for example, curriculum differentiation. The teacher can also look at the nature of the support that is needed. And in this case, the teacher together with the school-based support team can develop what we call individual support plan. You can ask yourself, what is the individual support plan? Please see the, the example of the individual support plan below. And for, for your information, if you need to know more about the individual support plan, you can go to the CS policy document, page 58. Um, uh, here, I'm just citing an example of how, ca how you can develop the individual support plan or how you can structure it. Um, this template reflects the important aspects that are needed for the teacher and the school-based support team as they develop the individual support plan. For example, we have in, in the first column areas in which support is needed. If, for instance, the learner is having a problem with behavior or behavior difficulties, then the next column will be the target to be achieved. What do, what do the teacher, the teacher and the school-based support team uh, need to achieve uh, from this behavior difficulties? They want, for an example, they want to, uh, to stop bullying behavior. That is another column. You can insert any other challenging um, characteristic of the child. Maybe it may not be uh, behavior difficulties. It can be um, 
difficulty with seeing or or visual impairment or auditory impairment and so forth. So the individual support plan can be um, uh, developed to assist the learner in that way. So with this example that we have given, behavior difficulties, what strategies are needed or what intervention strategies can be applied to assist the learner? This information must also be provided on the template for individual support plan. Okay, the other strategy that can be applied maybe for this learner with behavior difficulties, with bullying uh, behavior. The teacher can assign a mentor teacher to support the learner. Another teacher who has knowledge can be assigned to assist, or the teacher can involve the parents of the learner. All right, obviously the responsible person on this template should be the teacher together with the school principal because teachers may not perform duties uh, outside the knowledge of the school principal, or the school principal can also uh, assist in um, networking with other uh, stakeholders within the community who have knowledge about how to assist such type of learners that have been identified as having barriers to learning. Then the individual support plan must also have the time frame. The targeted behavior change should be reached or the, 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 the goal or the objective should be reached within a certain period that you shall have set on the individual support plan. In this case, for an example, it can be within a month. So uh, there must also be a date for review. You must review uh, all the activities that, uh, that have been done to achieve the targeted um, improved behavior or whatever that you shall have identified as a barrier to learning. And then the last column should be comment on the progress made. Why should you give comments? Because the district-based support team would like to come and know about the progress made with regard to the learner, the learner's um, challenges or barriers to learning that have been identified. Now, looking at the level of support that is needed, uh, learners do differ or the barriers to learning differ in their degrees. So we have learners that need low level of support, others need medium level of support, whereas others need high level of support. So in most cases, the learners that need low level of support are found in mainstream schools, whereas the learners that are found that that need medium level of support are mostly uh, placed at uh, full service inclusive schools. The learners that uh, need high level of support are those that are found or that are placed by the district based support team. Uh, at special schools. So the teacher and the school-based support team together with the school management team must involve specialized services, which means uh, this can include services like remedial education, counseling, rehabilitation, and therapeutic services. The teacher and the school-based support team can also involve various personnel for support provisioning. So this one uh, can also involve the learning support teachers with expertise, as well as the district-based uh, district support team.